Hey guys, so I've been wanting to film these type of videos for a while to do with unsolved missing persons cases or unsolved murder mysteries and things like that. I know it can be a bit weird but I really enjoy watching these type of videos and I'd really like to bring more awareness to these type of cases so that hopefully one day they could become solved. So obviously you can tell by the title but the case that I'm going to be talking about today is about the Beaumont children and their disappearance. So the three Beaumont children disappeared in 1966 from a beach in South Australia. It was Australia Day on the 26th of January 1966 and the children disappeared from Janelg Beach. There were three children, Jane who was the eldest and she was nine, Anna who was seven and Grant who was four years old. It is one of Australia's most famous cold cases and it is still unsolved to this day. It happened more than 50 years ago and it actually sparked one of the largest police investigations in Australian history. It was a major catalyst for the change of the way parents actually supervise their children, whether they let them to go out by themselves or not. Now we'll talk about what actually happened on the day. So it was a hot summer's day. The three children were on their way to Glenelg Beach. The beach was just about a five minute bus ride from their home and they'd actually made the same trip the day before. 10 a.m. The children boarded the bus to go to the beach. Their mum Nancy had told them before they had left that they needed to return home by 2 p.m. so that they could come home and have their lunch. Um, when 2 p.m. actually arrived and the children had not returned home, Nancy began to grow concerned. She thought that they must have just missed the first bus and that they would be coming home on the second bus. When the second bus arrived and the children were nowhere in sight, Nancy grew more concerned and she contacted her husband. It is said that Nancy and her husband went looking for the children around the area and then at 7.30 p.m. that night they actually called the police and reported them as missing. The next day the children had been declared as missing persons. The next information that I'm going to tell you about is all based on eyewitness accounts. So at 10.15 a.m. the children were seen leaving the beach so they'd obviously only been there a short time. Then at 11 a.m. they were seen playing under a sprinkler. They were also with a man at this time and he was described as a tall, lean, blonde haired man in a blue bathing suit and they said that he was in his mid to late 30s. At 11.15 a.m. the eyewitness said that they had seen the man was playing with the children. At 11.45 the children were seen buying pastries from a pastry store with a $1 note. This was actually seen as quite strange as the children did not leave home with that much money nor did their parents give them that much money. They were already coming home for lunch so they didn't need to go and buy food. It was also strange because the children were really shy and they wouldn't normally go up and talk to a random stranger. 3pm was actually the last hiding of the children and they were seen by their local postman walking down Jetty Road by themselves. They seemed to be happy, they even waved to the postman and he said that they looked fine. This case has also been ruled out as a drowning as the children were carrying quite a few items of clothing in between them. I believe it was around about 17 items that they had and none of these have ever been found. And I'd also like to note that Anna had previously said to her mother that Jane had a boyfriend down at the beach but her mother just blew it off thinking oh yeah just another boy that's her age. Now police believe that this could be the man. Now I'm going to talk about the leads for this case. There wasn't too much straight after because there was little evidence. The children really just disappeared out of nowhere and the only kind of suspect they had was the lean tall blonde man in the blue bathing suit. But because of this lack of leads and evidence, police actually called in paranormal investigators to help with the case. They had Gerard Croset, sorry if I'm butchering that, um, who is a Dutch parapsychologist. He actually flew to Australia to come and help with the case and he believed that his psychic abilities led him to a warehouse near where the children lived. He believed that this warehouse is where the children's bodies were buried. After fundraising $40,000 to have the area demolished and excavated to find the children's bodies, there was no evidence that the children's bodies had ever been there. Then after about two years, Nancy actually received an anonymous letter stating that the children were being held captive. 
Um, the letter also included details of a time and place where the children would be dropped off or returned to the parents. So obviously Nancy and her husband went to this area. They were followed by a undercover detective. No one ever arrived or the children weren't returned. There was no sighting of anything. So they obviously went home. Uh, another letter arrived shortly after this first letter and it stated that because the parents were actually with an undercover detective at the time that the children would never be returned and that they would be kept forever. In 1992 the letters were actually proved to be a hoax by DNA fingerprinting. Police investigators had determined that the letters had been written by a teenager at the time and he had just done it as a joke to think he was funny and he actually had nothing to do with the case. Later developments for this case have been that in 2013 a tip led investigators to a factory in North Plymonton. They excavated this area as well but unfortunately there was no evidence of the children being there. The only thing that they did find was that one part of the area that they had excavated had previously been upturned but this didn't really lead anywhere else. The case still remains open to this day. It's still an active investigation. Now we're going to talk about the suspects. There was quite a few suspects for this case, but I only really focused on two because I believe that they are the most believable or most, they have the most evidence. So the first suspect, his name is Bevan Spencer Von Elm. Sorry if I'm stuffing that up. He was actually a 37 year old accountant and he had been sentenced to life imprisonment for the murder of a 15 year old boy named Richard Kelvin. Reason to believe that he was a suspect for this case as he was known to frequent the area of Glenelg Beach quite often. Reports said that he used to go there to perv on people in the change rooms. He actually resembles the drawings of the suspect at the time, although at the time of the children's disappearance, he was only about 20 years old, whereas the suspect described was in his mid to late 30s. The next suspect that I found, his name was Arthur Stanley Brown, and he was named as a suspect in 1998 after he had been charged with the murders of two young girls from Mackay, who were aged 7 and 5. He actually died in 2002. This has kind of made it hard for police to determine whether he had anything to do with the Beaumont children and their disappearance. He's also considered a suspect as he resembles the police descriptions of the man and the drawings at the time. They struggled to find a connection between Arthur and the disappearance of the Beaumont children because they couldn't actually find any of his employment records for that time, which is pretty strange. Some people believe that he may have even deleted his own employment record files or anything like that, anything to do that linked him to being in South Australia at the time, as he had an unrestricted access to government buildings. The main reason he is believed to be a suspect in the Beaumont children case is because he is also a suspect for the disappearances of two girls in Adelaide. These girls were Joanne Ratcliffe, aged 11, and Christy Gordon, aged 4. This happened in 1973 at Adelaide Oval at a football match. I'd also like to note that the first suspect, Bevan, he is also a suspect for the Adelaide girls case. Really, there hasn't been much further information or evidence or any leads like that for this case, still 50 years on. The investigation still remains open and there is a $1 million reward for anyone with information that might help solve the case. And I'll leave the information for that down in the description. So that's all I have for today's case. If you have any other ideas for cases that you'd like me to talk about, you can leave those down in the comments below. Give this video a like if you enjoy these type of videos and I'll see you in the next video.